for five years, from 66 to 71. And when I came to Prague, it was just after my baccalaureate, uh, and I was like, you know, kid, innocent, to some extent. Smart, i never been so smart later. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm experienced. <coughs> so, Prague for me was like the real initiation. It means everything which happened there happened for the first time, and I have, um, I had to take the responsibility for that, and, and um, it, um, it was very shocking at the beginning because I didn't expect that it's such a different country from Poland. Uh, it's close, the language is pretty close, so after a few, few months I was able to, to speak. But their mentality and their sense of humor and their approach, you know, uh, to the world and the relationship, and everything was slightly different. And, and it fascinated me and I started to like it very quickly. Um, the, what, what, what was the difference also from Poland was uh, that um, the Stalinization didn't end yet there. It means that the censorship or the mentality of the people or the education had been very much like under Stalin. And, uh, it was very few books, um, the modern books of the literature which wasn't um, exactly, you know, the, the uh, socialist realist which were, which were published. They just started to publish Kafka, which was very controversial. Um, and um, I, I felt suddenly that I know much more than um, any of my uh, colleagues and uh, the most of my professors, because uh, in Poland this process started after 56. Uh, so uh, in early 60s, practically everything, which except of some, you know, anti-communist uh, stuff had been published, and then we had the access to practically everything which was, which was, or most of the things which been, which been alive in the, in the philosophy or, or literature. Uh, so uh, when I met Milan Kundera, who was um, uh, teaching the history of the literature for the first grade for everybody in the school, for the directors, writers, um, uh, cameraman and so, um, it was shock to all of my students because he was talking about the things they didn't know, they didn't hear about. For me, it wasn't so shocking because I knew most of the books he was uh, he was uh, um, speaking about. But even so, he was fascinating. He was so fascinating, intellectual, and so beautiful at the same time that all girls in the school fall in love with him, and he knew that he is good looking, so he is, and that he has beautiful hands <coughs> of pianists, so of course you are doing this and looking like looking like that. <clears throat> anyway, you know, my first, uh, first thing which, which happened it was uh, that I can be different that, and that I have to accept a different kind of a culture and, um, and, um, and tradition and, and um, um, they've been much more democratic. You, you, in, in Poland, you, you've been able immediately to say who's an artist, or filmmaker, or professor, and who is the worker. In Czechoslovakia, practically it wasn't the difference. They all been sitting in this, you know, in this uh, hospodas, in this, you know, in this bars and drinking beer, and they've been dressed in the same way, so it was impossible to tell who is who. Um, and, um, and that's when I, I started to really like it, the fact that, you know, that the people are even in some way. Um, and, um, and I started to really, you know, to, 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 to be worried if I can be a filmmaker, if I can be an artist, and, you know, it was a lot of the competition among the students, and, um, and I met um, my husband-to-be, but before meeting him, I, 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 I was experiencing a lot of, like, um, how to tell, experiences with, with, with other men, uh, black and white, and um, <laughs> and it was you know it was like that you know I, I remember we had in the in the in the, uh, in the student house it was one girl from uh, another department and she was pregnant uh, she got pregnant and she didn't realize till it was too late uh, and um, and we've been making like the lottery you know if uh, the child will be black yellow or white because she wasn't sure. 
<laughs> and no one thought that she's horror or something. It was, you know, it was in the air. Something was like that. So um, I think after when I was thinking about it, I thought that it was not only the time of this, some kind of a pre-revolution, uh, but also that you know that the sex was probably one of the of the of the uh, things which you can express your personal freedom. Anyway, in January '68 um, came the change on the head of the of the of the, the Czechoslovak Communist Party, and Stalinian Novotny was changed by the guy no one knew about. Certain Dubček was Slovak, which was already very, 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 very new, because it was the minority, it was the smaller part of the of the, of the country, and poorer, poorer. Uh, but I remember that I wasn't interested at all. I was from the um, communist family, the communist and then dissident communist family, and um, in my home, 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 um, all the time they've been discussing, you know. If this um, um, member of the Central Committee of the Party is progressive or maybe regressive, and if this talks to this one, it means this and this, and I thought that is bullshit. That they are all, you know, the gangster, and I am, you know, pure artist, and I'm not interested in the bullshit like that. Uh, so when this change came, I, I just didn't react to that. I didn't notice it like for probably three months. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the, 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 the student movement in Poland, uh, where many of my friends have been involved, started and uh, they've been arrested, they've been riots and they've been arrested. Uh, and the anti-Semitic anti -Semitic movement um, directed by the Central Committee of the Party and uh, the Minister of Interior started in Poland. And it came to me, the, 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 the rights of the information. So, uh, we organized some kind of the student support in Prague for Poles, and then I started to be involved in, in Czech um, and Slovak student movement as well. Um, and you know, the, this change uh, happened one day. It was uh, the, I was uh, out on the street, coming out uh, back from the school, uh, and uh, I seen like the demonstration going. And they been young people. It was very colorful, and it was so beautifully free and joyful that I just, you know, joined them and started to work with them and after I didn't stop like for six months or so. Um, but, you know, there's... this um, And Kundera exactly wrote about this period that was the Carnival of Freedom. It was... Uh, it was uh, insouciant, how French can tell it means. It wasn't any kind of the... No one really realized what it means, where we are living through it, and that the Soviet Union is very close, and Brezhnev has very, you know, precise opinion about what is allowed for this, for this, you know, <coughs> uh, countries, or what is not, and that they are, of course, afraid that it will spread this, you know, this virus of freedom, and it was extremely dangerous for them. Uh, so, uh, they stopped it with the tanks on uh, August 21st, and it was a shock to everybody, you know. The people have been so stupid there, you know, so like charmed by this, you know, by this, by this uh, celebration of freedom that uh, they didn't notice what's were, going on. Were you shocked at the time? I was totally shocked, yeah. Mm -hmm. My parents was, uh, they didn't know it, you know, so they've been sending me like, like the messages, like, which I ignored. And I thought, you know, again. Uh, but, uh, no, I was shocked. Um, and everybody, you know, the, the much more wiser and experienced people than myself was shocked and surprised. So, anyway, um, after I realized very quickly, you know, where it's going, and it was, um, uh, it was very sad. And I hope that the kind of the um, opposition to to this um, the new Stalinization or something will be stronger. It looked from the beginning that everybody are solidary, that that they, you know that the, the, the country is reunited, you know, in this in this ambitious of, 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 of preserving at least the path of the freedom. Uh, but quite quickly, in during a few months, it became it became quite clear that you know that the people that is going in one way direction, and that the people start to resign. And this is this moment when Jan Palak decided that. It's necessary to shape the nation, and, and he did what he did.
And where were you when you heard the news about Jan Paul? I've been actually in Poland when it happened because I went for the holidays, for the, for the Christmas, and they take my passport, which means I was unable to come back. Uh, but because, because I, I was married already to the, to the student, um, uh, Czechoslovak citizen, to the student fellow, uh, after, you know, few, few months, two months, I think, or a month and a half, something like that, it, 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 it felt like forever. Anyway, they gave me back, you know, the, the permission to go out. So I came back probably about a week or two after, after um, Palak's funeral. Uh, and um, then every, everybody has uh, been still very excited about, you know, and very like moved and, and uh, about what happened. And um, a lot of my colleagues from the film school have been shooting some footage, which part I used to use, yes. um, from the funerals and, and you know, and also from 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 some demonstrations and wakes. Uh, but um, probably. Two weeks later, one month after Palak's death, uh, another young student, Jan Zaitz, uh, put himself on fire, and in this moment, it was practically totally ignored. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, the, the government authorities and the, and the media have been uh, censored, and they decided like to, 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 to play very low key, it was only a few papers which published anything about it. But what was more, um, like shocking, and at the same time, you know, it, it, it woke up my, you know, my, I hope to tell, premonition about where it's going. And from this moment, I didn't have the illusions, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that the people didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. That they said, enough, you know, we, we paid our respect to Pala, but if fighting for freedom means that we have to make such an extreme choice, we prefer not, not to have freedom, we prefer to just have our lives. So in some way it accelerated, I think, this process of the, of the, of the resignation. I, I was pulled over by the, um, the tone of the film, because the events covered in the film, the film covers a vast amount of territory, and, um, uh, and does it very succinctly and very well, but it also, the way that you uh, recall the feeling of life, of what it was like to, to be there. It was something that I found kind of overwhelming. There's a really present tense quality to the film, and it's almost like you can um, breathe the air. Uh, it's almost like you're remembering, um, you know, the way that the walls looked and, you know, the rooms and, you know, the way that it felt to be um, together, the clothes that you were wearing. It's pretty striking. I did remember it pretty well, but of yeah. course we have also a lot of photos and films and so on. Sure. And the young writer who was, you know, Stefan Hulik, Stefan Hulik uh, who when he wrote the script was 26, mm. now he's probably 29. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he had like incredibly like powerful feeling about it. It was like the instinct that like, in some point I started to joke that he probably was the reincarnation of somebody who lived in this time. Mm. Um, but what was I, 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 it means in the experience of the normalization, it was you know in very perverse way the communists called the period of twenty years, which was totally out of normal normalization. Um, uh, this period was for me an incredible lesson about you know about humanity, and um, it's it's why I you know I, I immediately embraced this story because I. I see it as some kind of the anatomy of, of this process, of this, you know, of this, of this process of when the quiet, soft, but very, you know, consequent um, oppression breaks people's characters and lives and, 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 and corrupt them morally to, to the very, you know, to the extent that they, that they are not themselves anymore in some way. But in the same time, the life is going on, so, you know, it's, Everything is in, in the in the in the in the gray shades, uh, and um, and it's something you know you are you are I think you are ashamed of, but at the same time it's you don't want to talk about it, and no one and the people have been not talking, you know. Yes. And um, and um, and uh, what was the biggest mystery to me always? It, it was like in the society which 
is solidary in this resignation. Some people are going against the stream and find the courage or, or stupidity or I don't know what, you know, to do the things which are totally irrational. And in Poland, at least, they have the support of the big part of the society. Mm. Uh, in Czechoslovakia, no. Mm. They've been very few. And um, when I talk to many of my, of my colleagues, who've been not in the opposition, but who've been the filmmakers, uh, they've been angry with them. They've been angry with the people like uh, Havel or Bureshova, because uh, they've been doing this kind of the unpleasant mirror to their own co-openness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So they've been not angry with, the, you know, again, the government or Husak or whoever, but they've been, they've been really very aggressively angry with, with, the, with the fellows who've been actually fighting for freedom. Yeah, well, that's why the final shot of your heroine is so powerful. Because she's just, you know, she's crying in bed with her children. She's so completely alone. Yeah, she was alone. Yeah. It means those few people who been like, you know, like the, I think the, the group of the first Christian in the crowd or something. Yes. <laughs> and um, when did you decide when you were uh, uh, were working with with Hulik on the scenario? When did you decide to do the flash forward to 1989? Because that's, that's a very powerful oh idea. God. At the end of the film, to move ahead to 1989. After it was from the beginning. It was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the kind of, 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 you know, happy end I think the story needed. And it was also the happy end which happened during the, uh, my lifetime. And uh, no one of us expected that it will happen in our lifetime. So, um, you know, it was like a miracle in some way. Mm -hmm. And also, it, you know, it, it shown that that you know that exactly you know that the, the, the bush is burning you know and um, even if we, if we think that it's not so um, so yeah I you know it means the concept of the script of the of the of the story when it was pretty much didn't move too much we we've been changing a bit dramaturgy and on the beginning it was sh a, bit sh a bit shorter yes. and after when um, HBO and Europe decided they decided that they were make this movie and finance it, which was a very courageous decision because they, they never did anything like that before. Mm -hmm. Before it was in production, in original production, it was only some documentaries and, um, and uh, several um, version of, um, of, of uh, in treatment. Yes. Um, so, you know, it was, it was, it was great that they did. Uh, and they gave us a lot of trust and, you know, and uh, relatively comfortable budget, especially for Czech standards. And um, it was probably the happiest shooting I had in the last 10 years or more. Mm -hmm. uh, because everybody had been extremely, you know, motivated and devoted to, 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 to give everything, you know, to, 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 to make it good. Mm -hmm. And after the crew, you know, we had fantastic line producer who was really like, like the father to everybody, you know, and who helping us enormously. And um, all the producers have been very, you know, creative. It means it was very few moments when I felt that is the misunderstanding. We have been able to discuss practical issues. Mm. Do you feel that your experience working on American episodic television, like on The Wire, um, you know, has, has uh, Given you a way into doing something like this uh, dramatically? Yeah, I think so. It means I, um, I didn't do enormous amount of, of, of episodic television, but I did like about 10 episodes altogether, yes. maybe a little more, more even now. Yeah. And um, especially the wire and um, <coughs> teach me you know, a, a lot about the craft, you know, the craft of the storytelling, you know, and keeping the, the tension. Uh, even if it's not classical kind of the you know of the of the of the of the movie which which has the arch like that. Yes. So uh, when I when I realized that uh, for most of the audience when we are screening because we've been screening it already in many projection screenings and you know and the festivals that the people are able really to you know to to be glued to the to the to the screen for four hours it was like big satisfaction you know, in terms of the. Filmmaker, craftsman. Yes. <laughs> um, when you studied in uh, uh, 
in the filmmaking in Czechoslovakia, you studied under Forman and Passer? Uh, Forman wasn't teaching in, okay. in the film school. Mm, my, on this, uh, my, my professor was uh, Karel Kachenia. I see. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the man I loved the most in the school, but he was not teaching me, but he became friends, was about Shore, mm -hmm. and who was one of the, I think, very important, mm -hmm. even if not so famous, representative of Czech New Wave. And the school was, you know, the school was pretty good, but the time was great, you know, and, yes. and, the, and the fellow students, it was, it was very inspiring, the other thing. Yeah. Um. I'm wondering if you could just talk about how your, your, when you went back to Poland, how your relationship with Andrzej Wajda uh, informed, came to inform your own work as a director. Uh, when I came back, you know, I didn't know practically anyone from the like, new generation of the filmmaker, or older generation neither. Uh, I met one um, uh, young filmmaker who was uh, the husband of a friend of mine, and we became very quickly friends, and he organized some kind of a meeting between me and uh, the, you know the, the, the generation of the you know coming into the industry filmmakers, uh, Krzysztof Kieślowski was there yes. uh, also, and they've been very curious about my, my Czech experience, and I was curious about their experience. Mm -hmm. So we started to exchange it, and the, uh, the film life in Poland, it was some kind of the liberalization in Poland, which which started uh, after. Um, after um, strikes in Gdansk in uh, 1970, yes. which been brutally, you know, um, um, stopped by the by the military and, and the police, and a lot of people have been killed. And after it got the change again of the secretary of the party, and the guy who came was much more liberal. <clears throat> uh, so um, also for the first time, uh, Andrzej Wajda became the head of the film group because the. Uh, everything was state, of course. It wasn't a private, independent cinema or something like that. Uh, and um, it was divided to the, the, the production group, and the leader was always like the director or screenwriter. Mm. And he, he he got his own group, uh, and he decided to take the young people, you know, to become the, the mentor, producer of the young people. The real reason was that uh, none from his generation didn't want to, to come to his, to his film group because they thought that he would be too selfish and uh, taking care about his own movies and, you know, and that he is you know, pretentious and he thinks that he's genius and so on. Uh, so he was in some way, you know, he didn't have the choice. He had, he had to go with the, young, with the young. And I have to tell you that he was fantastic. And he was extremely generous. and. Very giving, you know, and it was the best work with which can happen to me. I had the problems because the authorities, even with the slight um, liberalization, didn't want to allow me to work. I was already, you know, uh, I had a lot of problems because um, of my family story, which I will not tell now because it's complicated and long. Anyway, um, uh, my name was already, you know, very badly seen by the, by the communist authorities and uh, I also made some activity by my own, of my own in, in Prague and was arrested and was in prison, was sentenced and so on. So I was really the enemy of, you know, of, of, of the state to some extent. Uh, and it took a few years before I was able to do something and I have to tell that it would never happen if it wasn't, you know, why that was fighting for me. And, um, and also others like Krzysztof uh, Kieślowski or Krzysztof Zamusi. It, 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 in the middle of the 70s, you know, quite strong solidarity started among the, the, the group of the most important and also younger filmmakers. And we've been fighting together, you know, to, to, to push the censorship as far as possible. And it was actually a very joyful, joyful, joyful time, which prefigured in some way solidarity movement. The society will have been very cruel.